how to stop thinking about your stutter and speak naturally. All right. And these, I want to make clear right off the bat, this, this is what I'm going to talk about in this, in this video. By the end of this video, you're going to exactly know how to stop thinking about your stutter, how to stop obsessing and anticipating so you can speak naturally. And you must know that these two things are not separate speaking naturally and stop thinking about your stutter. These two things are the exact same shit because we already know how to speak naturally once we stop thinking about our stutter. I'm sure we have all had experiences like this in the past where there's certain people, there's certain environments, there's certain moods, there's certain times where we are an effortless speaker. And every single time, if you think back to that moment, you will see you're not thinking about your speech. It's the times where we're, no, we're not trying to be fluent. We're not thinking about our stutter. It's in these times that we're a natural speaker. And that's what we want to accomplish. And many people think this is like a random thing. It's not a fucking random thing. Many people think, many people who stutter think that like, yeah, it just comes and goes. It comes and goes. I can't control it when I'm on a good day and I'm not thinking about my stutter. I'm on a bad day and all I can think about is how fucking badly I'm stuttering. I, I used to think it was completely outside of my control. Like, actually, I would wake up every day and I'd think, is this going to be a good day or a bad day? Is this going to be a good speech day or a bad speech day? I don't fucking know. Yesterday it was bad, but I remember last week it went from bad to good in a day. And I just switched and I don't, don't know why. So maybe it's a good day today. Like I didn't know why it was switching. I didn't know why some days I could not think about it and speak effortlessly, but some days it was all I could fucking think about. All right. So I'm going to tell you exactly why you're thinking about it so much, how to stop thinking about it so much so you can speak naturally. And again, these two things are the same shit speaking naturally and stop thinking about it. It's the same thing as you put a bunch of water in a sink. You don't have to think, oh shit. And it's plugged. It, the sink's plugged. You, you don't have to think, ah, oh, I don't know if this water can flow naturally. Like, what? What the fuck are you talking about? If, if you remove the plug, the water is going to flow naturally. It doesn't, it doesn't have to think about it. And the constant thinking about your stutter is that plug. Once you remove it, your natural flowing speech is already there. You don't need speech techniques. You don't need breathing techniques. You need to remove that plug. And why that plug is there? why you're constantly thinking about it is for a variety of reasons i'm going to go over right now the first or before i even start if you don't know who i am hi i'm chase gillis and i help people overcome stuttering within 10 weeks inside of my program we work together very closely and overcome stuttering so let's get into it um if you want more information on that link down in the link down below in the bio you can talk you can talk to me for free and see if we'd be a good fit so the very first reason why you're constantly obsessing about your stutter is because that is the goal of yours your goal is to be fluent now of course you're going to think about what you want to achieve it's the same thing is if you said my goal every day is to make everybody like me. Everybody must like me. You're gonna be so fucking aware of if people like you or if they don't, because that's where your focus goes. But if that's not your goal and your goal is just like, I'm gonna show up today and my goal is to take 17,000 steps and that's it. Like I, I have, I have attract if I hit 17,000 steps, that's my main fucking goal. If I hit that mark, I reach my goal. You're, you're not gonna be thinking, does this person like me? No, your goal is 17,000 steps. So where, where your goal is, is where you put your time and energy and focus. 
And that's what you think about. So if your goal is fluency, of fucking course, you're going to constantly think about stuttering. You're going to constantly think about how you're, sh- how you're speaking. All right. So when we take a closer look at this, we, we must start to change our goal. So what is a better goal? I'll talk about that. What is a better goal to set so that, and this is very, Im- very important, so that we're working on our stutter as a byproduct of doing something else. This is how you stop thinking about your stutter. Speech therapy and all this other shit, they get this wrong because you come to therapy and you're focusing on your stutter. You're focusing on being fluent and they track your progress based upon how fluent you're being. So of course you're gonna think that you need to be fluent. But when this realm of life of gaining fluency is your number one goal, you're constantly just like closing yourself in this fucking constant fluency box in this stuttering box. It's all you, it's all you can think about when we already know how to speak, we already know how to speak. So what we must do instead is we must work on something else, not our stutter, not on fluency, not how yeah, how fluent we're being. That's not our goal. We're working on something else. And as a byproduct, while working on this other thing, we are developing the necessary qualities that we need to we need to develop in order to express ourselves freely. And this is how you overcome stuttering without thinking about it, which is fucking absolutely mandatory. For me to make all my speech progress, for me to be speaking to you right now, I had to stop thinking about my stutter. I had to stop thinking, trying to be fluent. And it was, it was hard. But the thing is, we already know how to be fluent and we must work on something else. We must have a different goal. And inside of this goal, we are developing the necessary qualities and characteristics we need to develop that we're lacking that stops us from expressing ourselves freely. And what some of these characteristics are that this goal of ours, we must develop inside. <clears throat> very, very simple. Okay. And this, this is a thick video. I just realized now this is fucking dense. This is a dense video. I usually just talk about one topic, but I'm really talking about like how to overcome stuttering right now so pause it take notes if you are like this is a lot of shit because i'm about to go even deeper so the care the characteristics we need to develop in order to express ourselves freely and not think about our our stutter is first we must understand why we're stuttering and this is so fucking dense why we're stuttering is just tension in the body okay The more tense we are in the body, the more stress and anxiety and fear we're holding onto, that's tension, the more we're going to stutter. So we must understand why we're storing fear, doubt, and anxiety and stress in the body. Because when we're not holding onto that, we're 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 not tense in the body. We're we're not thinking about our our stutter. We're not in a fear state. We're in a in we're in a in an in effortless state, in a tension-free state, and we're not thinking, we're not in our head, we're just expressing when there's no tension, okay? I hope this is making sense. And the reason why we store tension in the body is very, very simple. The first reason is because you care too much about what other people think about you, period. That's the very first thing that I worked on in my speech journey that got me 90% of the results that you see now is I stopped caring so much about what other people thought about me. And this is fucking tough. And this isn't something to think about. This isn't done in meditation. This is done by facing your fears. And for me, this was done by doing comfort zone challenges. So I would set myself challenge. I would set myself challenges to do a certain amount per week that get that would get me judged on purpose very small amounts at a time so my brain would understand that 
I'm not dying when I'm getting judged. And actually I feel fucking free when I get judged because then I get to realize that I'm not at the mercy of what other people think about me. And doing this for weeks on end, I realized my stutter was just fading because I stopped caring so much. I stopped dictating and speaking to please people, to prove myself, to be perfect. And I just allowed myself, <clears throat> I just allowed myself to fall into a state of authenticity of how I truly want to express myself. So I was no longer holding this tension of, I hope these people accept me. I hope these people think I'm cool. No, fuck that, I don't care. I'm just gonna express myself in trust that the right people will come into my life when I'm my most authentic self. And the right people will, will accept me when I express my authentic self. I don't care about the rest, all right? Learning to stop caring so much of what other people think about you is the number one key to release this tension. <clears throat> what you also must do is change the way you think about your stutter. So this is more of a men this is more of a mental thing to 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 do, but it's to realize that your stutter isn't this big bad negative monster that you've made it out to be. It's fucking neutral. Your stutter just is. It's not the cause of your loneliness. It's not the cause of the reason why you're not where you want to be, it's not. Your actions are the cause of that. Your stutter is simply an, a safety blanket that we use to hold back. And we hold back because we care too much about what other people think about us. But if we realized our stutter wasn't actually bad and it wasn't gonna get us, um, it, it, it's not the cause of why we're not being loved the way we want to be loved, not being respected the way we want to be respected, not being heard the way we want to be heard. If we realize it's not because of our stutter, but because of other, um, yeah, we're just caring too much about what people think about us and other qualities inside of us that we are insecure about, about expressing and being vulnerable into this world. If we, re if we realize it's that, then it's in our control. And we don't have to blame our stutter because to the extent you blame your stutter is to the same extent you're going to stutter. Because the more you blame it, the more you think it's a bad thing, the more in resistance you are to stutter. Because why would we want to do something that we know is bad, that we have put out to be this monster? We want to stay away from the monster. And we know what we resist persists. Fuck, this is a dense video, all right? So <laughs> really focus. We know what we resist persists. So if it's this big bad monster, then we're gonna wanna resist it. We're gonna push against it. We're gonna push against it. And this is gonna cause more tension inside of us because we stutter and we're gonna have more shame. We're gonna have more embarrassment because we made it out to be this big bad thing. We, that means we lost, means we failed if we did, if we stuttered. We must realize the truth of it. And the truth of it is our stutter is, a, is simply an indicator that indicates us when we're yet not free. It indicates us, it shows us the environments and the people in the, in the situations where we do not feel free to express ourselves, where we do not feel safe to express ourselves, where we still need filtering, where we still need people to like us, where we still seek that validation. It will expose, our stutter exposes us to those environments. It will come the most severe in those environments where we are yet not free, where we don't feel safe to be ourselves authentically without filtering. I hope your brain is fucking shattering right now. If this is the first video you've seen of you've seen of me, just know this is my densest video, but one that will probably change your life more than any fucking speech therapy will ever. All right, because I've I've dedicated my life to understanding stuttering and helping other people do so too, because it held me back for way too fucking long. And once we see our stutter as just neutral, as just the indicator, as just the thermostat that goes up and down, and we don't, we don't say, this is bad, this is good. We're just, okay, I'm stuttering more here. Why? And you go into that why. Why is it? And you don't blame your stutter. Why the fuck? You don't blame the thermostat for going up in temperature and down in temperature. It's the weather that's changing it. 
And it's the same thing with your stutter. You don't blame your stutter from going up. You don't say you're less of a person now. No, it's just the indicator to say, okay, why am I seeking so much fucking validation right now? Why do I feel unsafe to express my unfiltered thoughts? Why do I need to anticipate? Why am I seeking this person's approval? What is it about this person? And when you heal those, and once you feel enough to be yourself in situations with, without needing to filter and use any type of defense, but you just feel like you belong in these environments, you don't stutter, okay? So first thing, again, to, re, to recap is to take the goal off of fluency. That's, that's not the goal. It's going gonna, it's gonna to make you stutter more and more and more. The second thing is to learn to stop caring so much about what other people think about you. And that is something that I, it's like the main thing that I help my clients with. Because for me, that, that, that caused 90% of the growth. And for my clients, I know it's the same thing. When they come to me on a call, they're like, Chase, deep down, I kind of already know what to do, but I'm being held back from expressing myself freely because I just fucking care way too much about what people think about me and the embarrassment is too strong and I want these people's approval and I want, want to be seen as cool. Can you help me? And I'm like, I can fucking help you because I was exactly where this person was. And if you are caring too much about what somebody thinks about you, and you want to work on that in a systemized, desensitized way, this is like, let me know the perfect, the perfect fit. Um, and if you know that's the truth of why you're continuing to, to stutter and why you're continuing to hold back. And the last reason that I mentioned is your relationship with your stutter. You, you have to stop seeing it as this negative thing. And again, this is a process that I bring my clients through over a series of 10 weeks. We go through certain exercises, through certain um, challenges and through certain, and we develop certain habits for you to do each and every day. So you start to unpeel the conditioning that you've had been telling yourself that your stutter is a bad thing. When it's not, we need to unlearn that thought and develop new thoughts about what our stutter actually is and how it and how other people actually perceive it. And once we see that people don't actually care and it's actually not holding us back, then we remove the label of it being bad. As I've said a lot, but there's there's even more. All right. There's there's even more like intricacies that I know you have in your in your life right now that is still causing you to st still causing you to stutter, still causing you to hold back. And it wouldn't make sense for me to explain all of them because that would this video would be about four hours, 38 minutes long. It'd be a long fucking video. But if you want to find out um, what you need to do to overcome your stutter and you want to work on it, all right? You sincerely want to work on your stutter and you want to express yourself freely like you already can in a room by, your, by yourself or somebody you're extremely comfortable with. For me, that was my brother. For me, that was my brother growing up. If you want to express yourself like you do in those environments, but in every environment, in loud bars, in with work colleagues, with strangers that you just meet on dates or wh wherever, in every environment you want to express yourself freely, there's just a system you need to go through. And if you want to find out what that system exactly looks like and what we would work on together for a series of 10 weeks to overcome this, and again, that's guaranteed, then look at the link in my bio. You can book a free call with me. We'll talk. This isn't a sales call. This is just to see if I can help you and I'll develop a plan with you of what we would work on. And if it feels good for you, say, hey, like, I, I feel this, this is the truth. This is a thing that I've been missing. I've been searching on fucking YouTube and Google and the wiki how isn't cutting out, isn't cutting it. And the speech therapy isn't cutting it. And the other YouTube videos that's telling me to sing when I'm speaking isn't cutting it. And you want to 
actually address the root issues of why you don't feel safe to express yourself in every interaction, then let me know. Book that free call and your mind will fucking explode and you'll be like, this is what I've been looking for my entire life. <laughs> Big claim, but I promise you it's true. I love you and I'll see you and I'll see you in that call.